Hello and welcome to Strong and Curious. Today is another episode in the segment of Curious About Culture. In this episode, we talked about the Singaporean culture, including the common act of choping, people calling strangers uncle and auntie, insane laws such as the prohibition of chewing gum, and so much more. Enjoy. So to start off, here are a few fun facts about the country. Singapore is a small island city-state located in Southeast Asia, known for its multicultural society and thriving economy. Singapore's culture is a blend of Chinese, Malay, Indian, and Western influences. Singapore is also known for its cleanliness, strict laws, and efficient infrastructure. Singapore is one of the world's smallest countries, both in terms of land area and population. Despite its small size, it is one of the most prosperous nations in the world. My guest today is Carissa, who grew up in Singapore. She is also an exchange student here at Hanyang University, and we're going to talk about life in Singapore. Enjoy! I've seen there's a, a bunch of different cultures and languages. Mm-hmm. Um, so what would you say is like the main languages that are spoken? So the first language of Singapore is English. Most mm-hmm. people speak English and most of the ju- newer generation are fluent in English. Yeah. Maybe the only ones that are different would be the older the older generation who were like in the past they didn't get educated in English mm-hmm. so much. English is the first language. But the official language is Bahasa Melayu. Okay. So um and then there's four languages, four main languages in Singapore. So one is English, mm-hmm. and then Mandarin, mm-hmm. um, Bahasa Melayu, and Tamil. So these are the okay. four main ones. And the every child in Singapore, depending on your race, you have to pick up your mother tongue. So I'm Chinese. Yeah. Uh, my mother tongue is Mandarin. My okay. friend is Malay. Her mother tongue would be Bahasa Melayu. And you can apply. The government wants you to pick up second, second language. But uh, if you want you if you are of this race and you want to learn another language, mm-hmm. uh, you're allowed to as well. I've seen some places like that. Okay. Yeah. So other than the main languages, you also have a lot of dialects. Yeah. Like um yeah, it's just subcategories of Mandarin and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So there's a lot of spoken languages there. Yeah. I also found the language Singlish. <laughs> Could you explain what that is? I mean, I wouldn't exactly call it a language. It's more like slang. Maybe? A slang, yeah, yeah, an expression. The way people talk there, it's English. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it comes from uh, mixing the different languages in Singapore. So mainly, it's based on English. But then yeah. you bring in sentence structures from Chinese and words from Bahasa Melayu and all these other stuff, yeah. and then you put it together, and it becomes Singlish. Yeah. Okay. So I found like the classic, I don't know how you would pronounce them, but the, <laughs> these ones. Yeah. La, you, I, la, lo, le, me. Yeah. It, it feels a bit weird. It's like for me, so when you say it like yeah. that. Um, I think these ones come from Chinese because Chinese yeah. at the end, they put like a, the la. They literally have a word la and it's an like expression. Mm-hmm. So when you like translate it to English, it, it comes out as like L-A-H, la. Like, how would you use it in a sentence? I don't know. <laughs> like just a little. <laughs> yeah. okay. So like, like when you edit and it gives like an extra like, like a boost, it sends the message clearer. Yeah. So like for example, if someone, like if your friend asks you like asks you something really basic, you'd mm-hmm. be like you don't know me. It's like it's more than just you don't know. It's like like you really don't know. Like how yeah. can you not know? So it adds okay. a little bit of like subtle messaging to what you're trying to say to okay. your friend. And I read a stereotype. Now you gotta tell me if that's true. Uh, I found that um, Singaporeans are Olympic level complainers. Yeah, if it's a sport, we we win gold medal. (laughs) We win more than one gold medal. Uh, Yes, we are. So I think I told you before, but there are only two things Singaporeans Mm -hmm. unite on. Mm -hmm. One is complaining about Singapore, Mm -hmm. and two is defending Singapore from those who complain about it. <laughs> That's the only two times you see Singaporeans yeah. unite. Every time else they're disagreeing and like having some argument, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we complain a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think it's not something I realized until I got older and I traveled more. Yeah. I, and when I, when I, cause I lived, uh, other than Korea for four months, I lived in, I wasn't live, I was studying in Australia for a year. Okay. 
So um, I think you get to meet different people and you realize how much more Singaporeans complain. They complain about anything. You, like, if the weather's too hot, I've seen people complain, okay, the weather's always hot. People complain, yeah, that's too hot, too hot, too hot. Global warming, ooh. And then, <laughs> and then it gets cold, like 22 degrees, and yeah. they take out the winter jackets. Oh, it's too cold, it's too cold. Like, why is the weather so cold? Why is it so cold? 22 degrees is cold? Bro, I've seen people take out their puffer jackets. And yeah. I'm like, puffer jackets? Like, I don't even take that out until like, I come to Korea. Yeah. It's there. And then they say it's too cold. Or like the... 22 is nice. 22 is nice. But, but like, our norm is 30. Okay. Yeah. 20 yeah. on a good day. So 22 yeah. is like, yeah. puffer jackets. Yeah. So yeah, um, what else did I see people complain? I see about people complaining about how the bus drives too slow. Mm. But if the bus drives too fast, they say, "Oh, it's dangerous." <laughs> and I'm like, "What do you want him to do? <laughs> what do you want a driver to do?" So they they complain about everything, and I think this mindset, is, I think it's stereotype to be like the younger generation complain a lot. That's mm. the stereotype. But from what I see of everybody in Singapore, it's not just the younger generation. The yeah. older generation also complain a lot. Yeah. And I think it comes from the, for the older generation, my theory is that it's a form of expression because Singaporeans or rather Asians in general are not very good at expressing like what frustrates them or mm-hmm. what makes them feel bad or like their moods. It's not like Western where it's more open, you can talk about it. I think mental health and, and, and stuff like this is still like very stigmatized in Asia. Yeah. So what comes out as what what is supposed to come out as like talking about yourself and making it feels better comes out as complaints. Okay. So like they'll complain about their day, like ah, oh, like the, the driver drive too hard, I fell, mm. or like something like that. And that's for what I think are like the older generation and the adults. For the younger generation, it might come I don't hear them complain you don't really hear them complain obviously on the street. But if you're friends with some of them, sometimes they complain about things that are like it's like it's minor. Mm. It's really minor. And I think that comes from the fact that in general, this in Singapore, I think not all, this is a very, very rough, most people, not all, are kind of either they have like a medium social economic standing or like a good something. So they are kind of like well to do, not all. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they're very, very, very used to a comfortable life because in Singapore growing up, most of the time things are very, lack of a better word, spoon fed to you. Yeah. Not for everyone, but for most. Yeah. So things are very spoon fed for you. So anytime something goes off that, uh, yeah. it's like, and then you complain. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, that's uh, also a big thing. Like in the US, and yeah. basically not all, that's just first world problems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah. have real problems, then you start to make problems up and get yeah. mad about whatever. Yeah, and like, um, I think this thing also causes a lot of like, conflict between the older generation and the younger generation. Mm. So like the older generation likes to call the younger generation chow me jin. Which is Chinese for strawberry generation. <laughs> <laughs> if you, well, you want to guess why they call it strawberry generation? I guess it's something like snowflake. Mm, similar, but strawberry. like if you drop strawberries, usually they bruise when they say. Oh. <laughs> so when they say tomato, what they really mean is like we're so like easy to break. Like yeah, we're so soft. we can't soft, we can't take hardships. That's what they mean because I personally don't think it's really true, but I guess for some people it might be. Mm. And like so this. I think it comes from the fact that like, they're always like, oh, we can't take a hit. They always complain about our sending, like, oh, in the past, they like to use a back in my days, I used to like, cross the river to go to school, <laughs> or, like, climb trees, yeah. like climb a mountain or something like that. And I think that it comes from that. But yeah. then if you look at it logically and unbiasedly, actually both generations complain a lot. Mm. And I I don't know where it originated from, but that is the culture in Singapore. It's not good, it's not I wouldn't say it's good, I wouldn't say it's like actually bad either, it's just how mm. it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, then let's get back to culture. So mm-hmm. um, one thing that, that baffled me when I found it that when you speak to elderly people, you refer to everyone as uncle or auntie. <laughs> yeah, that the thing? that's true. Um, is, okay, hold on, before I start. In Susan, when you say uncle and auntie, do you only mean people who are related to you? Like yes. Yes. I mean, you, you would honestly. I mean, so I don't have. Mm. A, I mean, a, my I, I call one of my aunts actually Tanti, which mm. is like Tante is the mm. German word for yeah. aunt. Um, but uh, I don't even call them. And my other aunts, I just call them by the name. Oh. And not not auntie, but I wouldn't call a stranger that no. <laughs> <laughs> like if you call your real auntie by name, I think you get thrown out the 
like no food for you <laughs> <laughs> like no no one does it okay. so okay yeah so in Singapore I think it's the custom to address any male or female who is significantly older than you yeah. by auntie or uncle there is no fixed age which makes it a little bit dangerous because mm-hmm. then you're like what if they don't really want to be called auntie at that age mm. it's kind of like ajishi and ajuma in Korea okay. same thing so the reason I think the reason why we do that is it's a very Chinese culture thing. Mm-hmm. You don't call them by their name because I think it's rude. It's seen as rude to call them. Really? Yeah. It's a, and like okay. you wouldn't know the name of the store. Then. So if I'm yeah. going to order chicken rice, I'll be like, uncle, one chicken rice, that out, which means take away. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not going to be like, I don't know his name. Yeah. And so we call anyone who is, anyone that we want to address. Yeah. We call him auntie or uncle. And usually... When you are calling like your relatives, your mm-hmm. own relatives, uh, depending on the dialect that you are you are of. So I'm, I'm Hokkien, but when I address my mom's side, which is Hainanese, which is a dialect from China, okay. I call them by uh, my hui and abo. So okay. the the different terms have a little bit more meaning to them. Like for example, like when I say someone is my hui, it's like the my is kind of mean that they are younger sister than the mom. Okay. And please like name. Or if I say like Abo means like I, I can't remember which word. Abo just means someone who's older than the mom. A, a, mm-hmm. a female who's older than the mom. So what I'm trying to say is that for for in terms of family wise addressing, um, some still just say Abanti if you don't really want to address them, but some dialect groups have a little bit more specific terms to call them. Yeah. Yeah. So and then I think this is another thing is that where when we when I was in Australia and I had to address the professor, and he's even here here as well for one of the foreign professors. Yeah. They just tell me, oh, uh, just call me, like, yes. Ang- <laughs> like yeah, yeah, just call me Angus. Like, his yeah. name was like Angus Beacon. Just call me Angus. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Oh, I can't. So I'm like, so it started with like, I tried a few times. I was like, oh, Angus. I was like, like yeah, mm-hmm. I can do it. So I went to like, Professor Beacon. And yeah. then I ended up with Professor Angus. <laughs> so I think it's a very cultural thing. Like you wouldn't yeah. go to your aunt and just call him by first name. You wouldn't go to your professor and call him by their first name. Mm. Yeah. So no one does that in Singapore. You probably be called. Yeah, you'll be deemed as like male jia jia, which means no family teaching, like no okay. manners. If you ah, know. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's called uh, considered really good manners if you if you address people that way. Yeah, it's With not even good manners. It's just the norm now. It's, it's just norm, okay. it's there's only norm and bad. <laughs> there's okay. no good. It's just bad manners. And um, what do you call like uh, if you talk to someone younger than you, how would you refer to them? Oh. Would you call them by the name? Or so like my office? junior. Um, I don't know. Just mm-hmm. someone younger than you. My if it's someone younger, I usually just call them by the name. So I think the yeah. newer generation is is not really to uh, they don't really care about mm-hmm. that. It's only when you're addressing the older generation. So like if it's my junior, I'll just call them by their name. Yeah. They call me by their name. Uh, my, my, yeah, <laughs> by by name, my yeah. name too. Uh, mm-hmm. Then there's the thing of siblings. So mm-hmm. I have an older brother. Um, I am supposed to address him as Koko. Like in Singlish is Koko. But it comes from the Chinese word Koko. Which is, means big brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then if he has a younger brother, if my brother had a younger brother, he would call him Titi, which is Titi is Chinese for younger brother. Okay. Then same thing for the girl. So it's Tia Tia, which is the Tia, which is older sister. Mm-hmm. And then there's Mei Mei, which is Mei Mei, which mm-hmm. is younger sister. So uh, I think this diff- most of the families in Singapore, they expect their kids to address each other this way. Okay. Sometimes I get pissed off at my brother. I just go like, oh, never. <laughs> then I like, and when I tell my friends, like sometimes I address my brother by his name, they kind of like, I will never allow my younger sibling to do that. Really? Yeah, so it kind of shows me as a So I think my family doesn't really care too much about that. Okay. And my brother doesn't really care too much about that. But some families, they do. They do. And how do you address your parents? Oh, by mom and daddy. Mommy, daddy. Okay. okay. I heard that people who do address... I heard from a friend uh, in one of my classes that in... Uh, I think she... Sweden. Sometimes yeah. they call their parents by their name. Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> like, if the, I if mean, that in some just, cultures, that's definitely a thing. But for example, iPhones. Oh, yeah. Okay. First of all, it's weird. Second of all, I would get Ipata, which means like a slap. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And I, I got to call a homie, I got to get a yeah. place to sleep. No one calls their family, their parents by their, their first name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see some people, though, they save their parents' uh, contact as their first name. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why do you do that? They're like, oh, <laughs> if I get kidnapped, I don't want them to know who to call. Oh, or yeah. But like, I get it. Like, it's, it's <laughs> Singapore, I don't think you'll get kidnapped. Okay. Yeah, so that's how it works. 
Then um, what about superstitions? So I found one thing that uh, you mentioned once that it's actually more common in all of Asia with the chopsticks. Yeah. So um, most Asian countries, if you have a bowl of rice or basically just food, you don't stick your chopstick in there. Not because upright. Not upright. Actually, you don't stick your chopstick in the in the rice. Yeah. Like it can be upright a little bit or forty five minutes. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But I think it gives the vibe that it's like a because in Chinese culture they have a they have offerings made, especially mm-hmm. in like Buddhist and Taoist um, culture. Yeah. They offer uh, food at the altar and mm-hmm. usually they would like it looks like incense sticks sticking out so if yeah. you stick your chopsticks in like that, it looks like that and it's very it's not it's not pleasant at, at a dining table it's okay. very it's considered very rude like definitely the elders like i'll put that down okay yeah yeah so that's one of the big ones there are other ones like when you sweep the floor uh-huh. and don't sweep someone's leg it means that you're sweeping away their luck really yeah Okay, yeah. but, but like sweeping just with a broom? A broom, a mop, I think anything that kind of represents clean, yeah. don't do it on someone's leg. Okay. I remember when I was in school and my friends were playing around and yeah. you know, like, I was chasing someone with a broom. And I, I like, yeah. I didn't hit yeah. that hard, put a broom. And then she just happened to go back home and tell her grandparents about it. Uh-huh. The next day she came to school and she was like, my ama so angry with me. I was like, okay. why, why? Because like, the ama so nice, I don't want to piss off. Yeah. Why? I was like, what do you do? It's like, you, she, she said you shouldn't be hitting people with a broom. It's very bad luck. And I was like, oh. So it's considered bad luck. Bad luck is, I, I think, because broom is like dust on the floor. It's, mm. it's like related to And then you hit someone with yeah. luck. You know, the luck is going away. Yeah. Oh, there's one really weird one, which I actually can't really stand. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to wash your hair the day before Chinese New Year. Really? Yeah, because you won't wash it for your luck. Oh my god, the entire Singapore is like luck. It's like luck. <laughs> what we call what? Like, mess what? Okay. Yeah, so they are very like, a lot of Singaporeans are very like superstitious about what and like making sure their luck is good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then one thing I read is a big thing is choke. Can you yeah. explain what that is? Choke means to reserve a table mm-hmm. with something that you own. Most of the time, it's a packet of tissue paper. Okay. So if you go to uh, outdoor hawker centers, yeah. you would see an empty table with like a packet of tissue. Don't take that packet of tissue away yeah. and don't sit on it. It means mm-hmm. that someone is reserving that space for them to sit. Okay. Yeah. So we do that because like in in hawker centers, you don't. It's not a restaurant. It's not like a restaurant is a designated seat. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it gets really crowded, and the only way you can indicate is that by chopping. Um. The item used in chopping has evolved in the mm-hmm. recent years. Traditionally, it's with a packet of tissue paper. Mm-hmm. I've seen, I've heard people who say they send wallets, <laughs> like people would take out the cash and they go buy and leave their wallets there. I've okay. seen phones, bags usually, and then okay. a bottle. So like sometimes when my friends and I go, I'm like, anyone got water, water, choke, choke the table yeah. with the bottle, and then I'm like, here's yeah, mine, and I put my bottle down. So that's our table. Okay. So they, it just means that you're taking the table, like you're reserving the table. So you don't have to be scared because it will steal your stuff if you just leave it, like a um, stone? No one, I wouldn't say there's no crime in Singapore, it's just very low. Mm-hmm. Low crime, not no crime. Yeah. Uh, but it's very rare to to get your things stolen. Yeah. Unless it's something that's worth a lot, like obviously. Yeah. So I, actually I wouldn't say like, people say they've seen people uh, shopping with phones, mm-hmm. but I personally don't think it's a good idea. It's still better to have your phone with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I heard in Seoul also people leave phones. Yeah, that's around. insane. That I've seen this yeah. a lot here. Yeah. Uh, when I was with uh, Joshua, the uh, yeah, great yeah. friend, uh, he said that um, people don't steal here. They don't you steal. can really, if, if you're in a coffee, for example, like a coffee place, and yeah. you have your laptop, your wallet, your phone, your he- headphones, you yeah. can leave it all at the table, mm-hmm. and you can go to the bathroom, even if you're gone for like 10, 20 minutes for whatever, uh, you come back, everything's still here. Yeah. Like in Switzerland, I would never do that. I mean, I've never had anything stolen, but you wouldn't just leave your stuff out. Like chances yeah. are a lot higher for it. I, I think in Korea, it's because they know that if they get caught, it's mm-hmm. over for them. Like in terms of their life, it's over because it would really? be a, okay. um, from what I understand, it it would be like a mark because you have a record, mm-hmm. and then it's over. No one's gonna want to employ you. In Singapore, it's similar, but it's it's more of like you're gonna get caught. Mm-hmm. Like there's no, there, it's so small. That surveillance in the country, there's so much surveillance in the country yeah. because it's small. So like someone would see you taking it, some camera would catch you. There's yeah. no point stealing it. Okay, because you're not gonna get away. You're not gonna get away. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So choking with a, a pack of tissue paper works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, there's one kind of equivalence to like the Germans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but for example, if you go to classic German holiday destinations, mm -hmm. so not in Germany, mm -hmm. but like maybe Spain or mm -hmm. something, um, at the hotel, uh, like at the hotel pool, mm -hmm. the lawn chairs, they're all going to be just re choked basically mm -hmm. with the towel. So like they will get up at six, they put down the towels and then they go do whatever and they come back a few hours later to sit down. Oh my God. So they chop the entire, like the, the, ben the benches near the swimming pool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a classic move. Yeah. I heard that uh, FOMO is a big thing in terms of like queuing. Like queuing is a, a big thing. Yes. I think Could queuing is one thing. FOMO yeah. culture in Singapore is quite... Uh, now that I think about it, yeah, it's quite big. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, there's this like stereotype, and I think it's kind of true, that Singaporeans will just queue for it. <laughs> like, they won't even ask what the queue is for. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, queue, queue, just queue first. I'm like, why you queue? Queue first, ask later. And I was like, <laughs> but you don't even know what you're queuing for. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea why mm -hmm. they do it. I think it's this idea of like, you don't know what you can be missing out, which is basically formal. Mm -hmm. So, and it comes from, ah, it comes from this, uh, thing that we have in Singapore it's called kiasu kiasi I think I told you before mm -hmm. kiasu means it's Hokkien for scared to lose mm -hmm. or scared to lose out kiasi means scared to die okay yeah so like for example I would I'll just elaborate a little bit on this so that you can kind of try to point you would say someone's kiasi when they're like when the, the light is green and they're like wait 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 just, just check just double check that there's no car then you'll be like mm. one of them kiasi is car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah or like or like the person, or like you, before you hand out the assignment, your friend was like, triple, triple check, like quadruple mm. check. Like when it's already done, then you're like, why them kiasu? You're so scared of losing out. Mm. But like the first one in the queue, you're so kiasu. Like the queue opens at like, what? 12 p.m. You go at 12 p.m. Then yeah, you're kiasu. Mm. So I think it comes from this uh, kiasu mentality, the scared to lose out mentality. Okay. So people will just queue because yeah. whatever it is, they don't want to lose out. Yeah. So I think that's where it comes from. Okay. So it's really just there. A lot of people are already standing there, so it must be something. It must I be something. Like, it must be something free. Like, oh my god, like, Singapore's <laughs> love freebies. Like, freebies, king and queen. Anything that's free is, like, gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about the laws in Singapore. <laughs> I found some insane laws. Um, so, let's start off with, let's start easy. So, I mean, mm. littering is illegal, right? Littering is illegal, yes, definitely. I don't know about the... I see... The signs where they're like the fines what like a thousand dollars for littering. Really? For yeah. anything or does it depend on what it is? Um I think cigarette butts hold a different uh different fine. But mm. I think littering can go up pretty high. Okay. Most of the okay, so Singapore has so many laws that they fine you for that we're literally called the fine city. Like, <laughs> so fine. There is laws for like very ridiculous things as well. Most of the time, like what I call these tiny laws, the the, the fines maybe go to like thousand, five hundred, three hundred. And yeah, those are the laws. So I know there are laws like you can't bring the fruit durian onto the train. You get fined for bringing durian on the train because you know durian has a very, well, some people has a very pungent smell. Okay. So if you bring it on the train, it's going to stink up the whole cabin and then you get <laughs> fined for that. And they put, they actually put the signs on the, the mm -hmm. entrances of the train for you to know. No eating and drinking on the train, they fine you for that too. Um, I mean, what else you got for fines? Um, I found, for example, uh, not flushing a public toilet can get you fine as well. Yeah, they have that. I don't know how they catch you. <laughs> I haven't heard of anyone who got caught for not flushing yeah. the toilet. Just like, how do they catch you for that? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it just has to have more or less like an accident. Like yeah, yeah. I think someone has to that. complain about you. Like someone has to snitch on you. <laughs> like, can you imagine like someone like, oh, you didn't flush the toilet, you get caught and they call and then you get fine. But like, it's hard to prove. Why are you going to prove that? So. A lot of these fines are more deterrence. Mm. The fact that people know they're there makes people not do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so there's fine for like not flushing toilets. I think there's a fine for, you said there was a fine for spitting. Yeah, spitting, spitting is one to, up to $1,000, I found. Yeah, spitting is another issue. Uh, what else do we have? I found actually a ton of stuff. So for example, yeah, um, flying kites or playing any game that could gain, get into the way of traffic can get a fine up to $5,000. I don't know about the amount, but it sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have very designated places to fly kites. Yeah. Yeah. And drones as well. But drones are like, okay, drones are more normal because like they're like, like, like yeah. you might actually interfere with some systems. But mm. yeah. I mean, I guess it makes sense, at least uh, to some degree, like you shouldn't, 
I don't know, throw a soccer ball at the cars, you know, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Oh, yeah, then there's one way, like, you, sometimes at the, so Singapore lives in mostly high-rise buildings, which we call HDB blocks. Okay. And there's a void deck, which is, like, a common area below. Mm-hmm. I've seen signs where you can't play soccer in those places. You get fined for that. You can't skate there. You get fined for that. Uh, never actually met anyone who got fined for it. I feel like if you get caught, they might let you, just, they'll just let, if you're a kid, they'll just let you off. Yeah. They're not going to okay. go first, but it's really more like yeah. insurance. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, we have fines for everything now. Really. Yeah, I also found that, and I saw that you can get fined for feeding pigeons. Yeah, at certain p- places, yeah. Because they don't want you to, uh, at hawker centers, I think, yeah. they don't want you to attract the birds. Yeah, of course, because they come back to where they got Yeah, food. they get fined. So, yeah, now they mention fines. Like, you know when you go to Europe, they go like, oh, feed the pigeons, and then you can yeah. order the pigeons, and no one does anything. It's like, yeah, it's, you can get fined. And then um, that one blew my mind. You can use if you use another person's Wi-Fi, yeah. I can get a fine. You, you can even go to jail. For yeah, this I, because I, th- it I counts think it's, as hacking. I think I don't know if it is because it counts as hacking, but I, I heard of it because yeah. um, because like like the homes in Singapore are so close, mm-hmm. the country is so small that the Wi-Fi is, you can usually like connect them to your yeah. if, if they don't have a security. But I've seen. People who like squat at the void decks and they use the the Wi Fi of the house for them. Yeah. And they just use it to get. I don't think it's legal, but like yeah. I said, no one really gets caught unless you do something. Yeah. With them. Yeah. yeah, I guess that really has to do something with like. Yeah, I mean, but most. How we yeah, call. but most Wi Fi is like a security anyway, so I've yeah. never heard of people who got caught for that. And then I found like gum is very illegal, <laughs> yeah, especially know. if you deal. With gum. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't say very illegal. I think I read this one because uh, I think it's two thousand dollars. The fine can go up to two thousand dollars, so like maybe a few months of jail. Um, <laughs> That's I, <just> fucking crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was it like used to be like I don't know some criminal? No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It's it's it, it would blow your mind. It's just uh the our founding prime minister, our, like our prime minister back then, mm-hmm. Lee Kuan Yew. I think at that time some. Uh, a person like the cabinet or like the ruling party was saying the gums they dirty the floors mm. like people stick them under the tables, the table uh, chairs when you drop them on the floor they leave like those black marks yeah. that you see on the trees they didn't like that mm-hmm. it was more of like keeping the house clean okay. so they they banned uh, selling chewing gums yeah. so here's the thing <laughs> I think most foreigners like when they walk in with a pack from chewing gums they're like oh shit I'm gonna go to jail <laughs> that's not true you can consume like a pack of like if you bring it in Singapore for your own consumption, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Usually, you, you I haven't heard of anyone who got into trouble for just one pack for their own consumption. They're okay. They just don't want you bringing in a bulk and then selling it or distributing it. That's mm-hmm. illegal. Okay. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. if you bring in like one or two packs for your friends, yeah, it's fine. Which okay. is why like when when you're younger and you go overseas for a vacation and you come back yeah. with gum and you like give your friends like, you're the like the cool kid you're like the dealer like whoa you're like what's the guy from Breaking Bad you're like uh, what's his name Walter White yeah you're like Walter White you're like yeah gum <laughs> and then you get the really good tasting ones from Malaysia like oh yeah then mm. you're, you're the best friend yeah. okay so you can't eat gum in Singapore you just can't sell it okay yeah and then I found that walking around uh, uh, around your own house <laughs> naked can get you a fine in your own four walls. Yes, I think it's true because like I said, um, the houses are very close to each other. Yeah. I can literally, my friend stays, like back home, my friend stays on the neighboring block and yeah. I can use it. Oh, it's hot today. Uh, Hi, okay. that. So you can, and like it's so hot in Singapore, most people leave their windows open. No one closes it like the curtains. So if you walk around like naked, like, Mm. like the entire estate is going to know you can see mm. so like even back home my parents would be like make sure you close the, the curtains when you change yeah. and stuff like that so I think yeah. it's more of like um, modesty yeah yeah, like not an outrage of modesty yeah. like for yourself and for whoever is probably like <laughs> unfortunate <laughs> enough to see you yeah. so yeah I guess well, like I said never heard of anyone who got caught for that but I'm mm. sure yeah. okay yeah and then another crazy thing that's some public elevators are equipped with urine detection devices mm-hmm. that set off an alarm and close the doors uh, when urine is detected until the police arrive. Okay. Is that like a problem? People pissing in elevators? People pissing in elevators <laughs> is a big problem in Singapore. I don't understand. Just use a public toilet or something. Okay, maybe there's no public toilet, but like, why do you piss in the elevators? Yeah. It stinks up the thing for everybody. 
I don't know about those high tech elevators. Sounds expensive. I never mm-hmm. really seen one. At least I haven't tested it, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> but they do have cameras, and yeah. they don't put like one camera. They put like two yeah. at diagonal to make sure they got all yeah. angles of you if you do the act. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know why people post in elevators. Like, why would you want to take that risk? Like, you know, anytime yeah. the door can open. Yeah. Another problem is uh, people letting their pets piss in the elevators. It's such a small place. Really? It's, yeah, it's enclosed. It's gross. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> there are fines for that. If you don't pick up after your, your dog. Yeah. You can't walk your dog off the leash in Singapore. Mm. All these things are just about general safety and hygiene. Yeah. But yeah, pe- get, people get caught for that. The okay. pissing in the elevators. That's definitely true. <laughs> And then um, drugs are also very illegal, right? Mm. And is death penalty still a thing? Yeah, we get the touchy touchy topic. Uh, yes, Singapore for, still deals with it. Um, you get the death penalty for trafficking drugs. Uh, yeah. Different drugs vary, the amount varies for different drugs. I think yeah. for cocaine or was it heroin, it's only 50 grams. Okay. So if you traffic them, penalty. it's straight away a death penalty. They put you through the, the trial system yeah. you know, and stuff like that, but it's a death penalty that's being called. Okay. It's crazy. So I think recently there was the case of uh, a guy who, was he, was, was he Mal- Malaysian? He trafficked um, drugs, I'm not sure what, but he, the case that was brought up was that he was um, mentally disabled, I think, mm-hmm. or like rather there was some mental issue. So that was a case that was put forth to the court and then it brought up a big controversy because people are like maybe he didn't know what he was doing mm-hmm. and stuff like that or maybe like someone sneaked it on him and stuff so there was like petitions and outrage and people like most people the people who were like petitioning for his innocence or something like that or like for lighter sentences mm-hmm. were saying that it's because he didn't know what he was doing but then the court ruled that he knew what he was doing they found like they, they went through a very very tedious process of making sure they investigated everything mm-hmm. and then they ruled that he was trafficking drugs so I think recently he was put to death and they do it by oh. hanging. By hanging? Yeah, by hanging. Really? Yeah. That's if I'm such an evil way. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. They do it by hanging. And I think recently there was just another case. Like just recently, a few days ago. If I'm not wrong, I read about it. And then, so the, the main issue I think was the international outcry. Like the UN yeah. felt like it was really inhumane and stuff like that. Yeah. But surprisingly, um, for me it's unsurprising because I'm Singaporean, but most of Singaporeans are quite supportive of the the death penalty mm. because i think we as a nation have seen what happens to other countries when drugs are introduced mm. and like they go rampant like, it really really destroys nations and so our government is very very strong and very adamant on keeping it that way and i think most of Singapore is supportive because like you see we see it as i see it as results i guess like i see like i only have maybe eight cases per year and like another country might be like running rampant with drugs mm. but to me I see it as, as results yeah. so I think Singaporeans are very logical in their aspects yeah. but it doesn't I guess it doesn't agree with the, what the international consensus is yeah. that's inhumane mm-hmm. but uh, I think apart from drugs there are like the total of 33 offences that warrant the death penalty okay yeah, you have like I think treason terrorism kidnap with intent to murder murder uh, yeah a few others yeah. as well so it's not just drugs Okay. Yeah, so that's that's the thing with it. And with in terms of drugs, like a death penalty, can you get it for every drug, or like let's say mm. weed, for example? Oh, uh, yeah. I think if you get caught with trafficking weed, I think it's a death penalty as well. Like, okay. um, actually, there was a recent case with the weed issue. Like, mm. Singapore has a very very tough stance on drugs. So, um, recently, not recently, maybe like the the last year, um, the on. We have an Olympic gold winner. He's the only Olympic gold winner. His name is Joseph Schooley. Mm-hmm. So um, when he won Olympic gold, the entire country was like celebrating. Like, <clears throat> like he was like, whoo, the model. Mm-hmm. And then I think when he was in America training, um, he was going through some tough times or something. So he he took he just smoked weed. Mm-hmm. And when he came back, I was, I'm was i not sure what it was doing when he came. Yeah, I think when he came back, he failed the drug test. Jeez. The whole country went ham. Like, really? Like, yeah, they were disappointed in their example. They were not just disappointed. I think the 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 especially on Facebook, Jesus, like Singaporeans on Facebook are really mean and really hateful. Like the comments mm. that were being made about him were so bad, mm. and like I think the younger generation in general were more empathetic. Like you know, you can understand how why he did that. Mm. But he was he just went from national hero to like 
thrown under the bus. Yeah. And I think it was really sad because during that time it was when he lost his dad. Mm-hmm. Again, so he wasn't doing well in uh his swim swim meets. Like right after uh, winning the Olympics, he didn't perform well in the Southeast Asian Games. Straight away, people threw him under the bus. Mm-hmm. Like it was really really mean in the comments of Facebook. So like I like one can understand why he he consumed weed, but it was just consumption. In mm-hmm. I guess in countries like America and all that, weed consumption is just like. It's nothing. It's, yeah, it's, it's nothing. Like it's just a, part of. Especially in some states now, it's getting more and more. Legal. Yeah, yeah, but in Singapore, they, they threw him under the bus. So mm. I think now he's him and a few other national swimmers. So I think now things have definitely died down, which is great for him, I guess. But that is how, like, that's the mindset people have yeah. towards drugs in Singapore. It's really serious. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Because, uh, for example, for us in Switzerland, it's uh, a lot. Uh, I mean, it's still illegal at mm-hmm. this point, mm-hmm. but uh, they actually started uh, a project mm-hmm. to make it legal. So they started basically a study with, I think it was like 400 people, where uh, over the one or two years or something, they actually have access to legal recreational mm-hmm. weed, and then they can use it, and then they're studied to see like the effects and stuff. Mm-hmm. And if, they turn, if this yeah. turns out well, it will be legalized. So mm-hmm. I think in most European countries, it's going to come sooner or later. Yeah. Because... Yeah. The thing that just amazes me if you compare it to alcohol, mm. like so many deaths have come from alcohol. Mm. But I mean, the worst thing that happens when you smoke weed is you get hungry and chatty. <laughs> Talk about yeah, it, yeah, you have yeah. a snack, and that's it. Yeah, I, I think the reason, okay, my theory is that the reason why the government doesn't even allow like normal weed is because once you start allowing one drug, two drugs, then people will be like, what about this drug? Then when yeah. you draw the line, right? people will be like, oh, maybe this drug will be the same with weed. So I think they don't even want to start. Yeah. So don't even let it start. It doesn't start, and then you don't have to worry about it not stopping. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I think yeah. that's the general idea behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty weird. Then let's turn to a different subject. Um, what's the school system like? Do you also have the class at like elementary, middle school, high mm-hmm. school, and stuff? We don't call them middle school, elementary, and high school. Like, if you if you ask like like a sample of what grade are you, you they just stop. What does that mean? Mm. So we go, we follow the British UK system. So okay. we have primary school and then secondary school. And then that's where it gets messy. You either go to junior college, which is like the last two years of high school, I think. Mm-hmm. Or you go to a, a trade school, like trade school, which is called um, polytechnics. Okay. So polytechnics are kind of like uh, mini universities. Yeah. And you graduate with a diploma. So mm-hmm. you go in choosing a course and then you graduate with a diploma. So anyway, just to backtrack a little bit, uh, I think education in Singapore starts like kindergarten. So you have nursery, but I think nursery is like optional. Then kindergarten is where it really starts. And then you mm-hmm. follow through to primary school. When you come to secondary school, you start to choose subjects that you want to do, physics, bio, you go to JC or you go to poly. Mm-hmm. And then um, for JC kids, they generally go to university after that. For poly kids, it used to be the thing where if you have a diploma, it's enough for you to work. But then now the good the, the society is getting so competitive that even a diploma is not really enough. Mm-hmm. So you have to go to university, which kind of like it kind of like one step forward, two step back. Because the, the main point of polytechnics at the time where it was established was that it to give people like an easier way to get a diploma and get a job. But now yeah. it's 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 kind of dumb because then you have to do a diploma and you just to, to be competitive and for mm-hmm. employers to wanna uh, hire you, you have to go to uh, university. And Polytechnics takes three years. Okay. The, uh, JC takes two years. So some people say, like, why would I go the, why would I do an extra year yeah. and be late? But mm-hmm. um, in my opinion, I think uh, polytechnics are great because um, a lot of people I work with in I'm from engineering, they have a lot of hands-on skills if they've been to polytechnics. Mm-hmm. Not saying that the JC people have no skills. It's just that the polytechnics people have more hands-on skills because they have experience with it and they have to do like an internship. Mm. before they graduate so they have a bit more experience that's okay. school the system and how difficult is it like to get through like for example now that you've been to school here and also australia mm. um, what would you say like what's the difficulty level like i think it, it depends because i find it difficult here based on the way they conduct their classes it's mm-hmm. different from what i'm used to in yeah. singapore or rather it's different from what i'm used to in my local university okay in terms of the stress level of mm-hmm. the system here and the system in Singapore. Singapore is stressful. Here, even more so. Okay. So, in Singapore, they 
they start kids young, like you have to go to what we call tu- tuition classes. It's like more classes to talk to school, mm-hmm. to keep up with school. So in Singapore, the the government doesn't really say it, but there is a very clear divide between the elite schools and like what we call like neighborhood schools or non-elite schools. Mm-hmm. So like a lot of people, the Kiasu parents who don't want to lose out, would mm-hmm. want to send their kids, make sure their kids like well decked out in terms of academics and then send them to elite schools because then they then it's like yeah, yeah it's like a it. snowball effect you get a good yeah. school you get a very good university you get a good job and stuff like that so um people i mean it's it was it's a very it's a red race for sure there's this pressure where you don't want to fall behind from your peers mm-hmm. you don't want to be retained a year if it, it retains a year it's like a stigma it's, it's very bad or like you're a smart kid or whatever mm-hmm. so it's a it's a very bad mindset that i think yeah people should get out of but then i was also um like must have worked for it I, I also fell into that mindset because yeah. when I was in Australia I was supposed to do two years but I stopped it short because I didn't like what I was studying and I came back mm. and in order to be the same age or like the same pace as my peers I had to work really hard to get back into the team and I was so worried mm. but the thing is now if I think back about why am I worried because eventually I can work hard enough to get into university but mm. at the time in my head it's like I have to get back now like, yeah. I have to join I have to run back yeah, and stick with the pack. Out, yeah. But it's such a bad mindset. And mm-hmm. I think that's also why the guys are like, I don't want to use two years in NS because then like, I'll be behind on the pack or like, I don't want to go to the polytechnic because it's three years and I'll be like, behind my peers. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how the, the culture is like. Mm-hmm. I think it's changing, but it's still very slow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's very interesting. If you compare it to like European culture, yeah. um, I talked to uh, Nana from Denmark, mm-hmm. uh, also in a different episode, and she said like how it's actually encouraged to take a gap year, you know, go oh, travel, yeah, yeah, go yeah. see the world, hang out, yeah. chill. There's mm-hmm. even an extra year to basically do have. You do have some classes, mm-hmm. but it's very chill. They encourage yeah, you yeah. to have a life, except from school. Yeah. You know, to just be a kid yeah. and grow up. And in Switzerland, it's the same thing. Um, usually, most guys, it's the same thing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we can go between 18 and 26, mm-hmm. and you can choose when. Mm-hmm. Um, but for I did it for example just as soon as I could before my studies so I could finish it mm-hmm. and then do my studies in one piece Yeah. because others would like start during your studies and then you have to take like a semester off maybe mm-hmm. depending on how you schedule it mm-hmm. and uh, girls since they don't have to go to military they often take a gap year to travel or um, do something else so what the guys have military they would travel um, it, that really depends on, uh, we have the two different styles of services in mm-hmm. the military. You can do what I did. It, that's, uh, it's longer, but you do all your service in one piece and then mm-hmm. you're done forever. Yeah, yeah. And the other one is you do 18 weeks in one year and oh. then you do four weeks every year um, until, you're, see, see. until you have roughly 300 days in total. And that takes long and it's just inconvenient. Um, for some, um, like when you apply for a job, sometimes they'll ask you like, do you still have to go to the military? Like, uh, will I not have you four weeks a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's just a schedule issue. Yeah. But um, it's up to you how, how you do it. And yeah. I just did all, everything at once, so it's done. And uh, But I'm probably still going to go back. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's the good thing that the, the boys in Singapore have to do at 18. So that when they come out and they go to a job, they don't have to do with the, have you done your research? Yeah. So, but... Now that you remind me, the this idea of a gap year mm-hmm. is also very frowned like frowned upon. Yeah. Like people don't see it in a good like ah, okay. ah, you're gonna take a gap year, like then mm-hmm. you'll be one year behind. And I'm like I'm like I did it as well because I, I think yeah. about it as like my friend took a gap year, I'm like, oh you sure? But yeah. I'm like, why am I asking you to be sure? Like he must yeah. take a gap year, he should take a gap year. And you're never gonna be that age again to yeah. be like, yeah. in that pink of health too. Yeah. But the sad thing is I think Jane Brown is so caught up in their red race. They don't see that. Mm-hmm. Now the younger generation is like traveling more, seeing the world and be like, oh yeah, maybe I should take a gap year. It's not, it's starting to be less frowned upon. Mm-hmm. But back then it was like, oh, you don't want to take a gap year. And you can be like struggling with mental health and you will still be contemplating whether you want to take a gap year. Mm-hmm. It gets that bad in, I mean, mm-hmm. Singapore. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, but also very interesting. Like now ever since I started this culture yeah. edition of yeah, the yeah. podcast, I can really compare like the different cultures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so far, what I've heard from the Asian parts, it's really very like efficient, mm. get shit done, go to yeah. school, yeah. and you go to school as long as and intensely as possible to get a good job, and then you live as a worker. Yeah. You know, you live to work kind of thing. Yeah. 
and uh, in Europe. So I have my next podcast going to be with uh, Finland. Mm. I mean, a Finnish girl. Yeah, <laughs> you're a <laughs> top of country. <laughs> and um, uh, I, uh, when I did my research, I found that most people are, don't work longer than like 4 p.m. And um, it's really the the life is you do have to study, of course, but it's very you you work to live kind of mm-hmm. kind of way. You know, you do work, you know, to sustain yourself and everything. But it's a lot more freedom, a lot more let the people do what they want, mm-hmm. especially like uh, the school that in Denmark I learned about is also very that you can learn more what interests you and you don't get like math shoved down your throat, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's not hammered into you. Um, or for example, if you compare it to Korea, I was recently out uh, to play billiard during the week yeah. and we were, uh, I don't know, like nine, maybe we were at, at the subway station and then a few kids in uniform ran past us. And then Joshua, my current friend, he said like, um, they are, are getting home from school now. And that's just crazy. Like when I was that age, um, in, in Switzerland there, you have school until like three, maybe four yeah. or something. Yeah. Like the worst I had was in high school, you had school until five, at the very worst case six, but that's only because you have like some extra special, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. But usually it's a lot more, you have a lot more time to be a kid. Yeah, it's, I think it, it's just an Asian thing. Because I think from, from the past, I think Asian people always got where they, the, the success that they got is always through hard work mm-hmm. and struggle. So this mindset that you have to work really hard, you have to get that success, mm-hmm. gets passed down in the generation and then it, you see like in the way of life. So it, like what you mentioned is not uncommon too. Like in Singapore, they would have class till three, four, they would have two hours of tuition after that. So that puts them six, maybe they have piano lessons, violin mm-hmm. lessons after that, that puts them at like nine and they go to bed and they rings and repeat. So it's not really a case now. Nowadays, the newer parents are like, do you want to do this? Do you need it? If you need it, I'll do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to learn piano. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to learn violin. So that's good. But it used to be like that as well. I'm pretty fortunate in the sense that my parents never really put much stress on me academically. Mm -hmm. So for me and my brother, they kind of just made sure that we studied what we need to study. The rest of the time, they let us be kids. The interesting thing about that is I put a lot of pressure on myself. Mm. My parents don't stress me for a university, but mm. now when I go back, I'm like, my GPA is going to tank my GPA. Why does, I don't know why it matters so much to me. Mm. It's a mindset that has been ingrained in me as a Singaporean to always want to be a cream of the crop, keep up with mm. the pack, make sure you're at the front of the pack. So, so it, it becomes interesting because now it's not even a generational thing where they pass it down because my parents didn't stress me. It just becomes the society's mindset around mm. this kind of issues. So it's, I hope it changes soon. I think it is. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting to see like the different yeah. collective mindsets of yeah. entire cultures. Because it's really, it seems to be more uh, the priority of happiness in mm. like the European Nordic ca- countries yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah. And in, in Asia, it's a lot more you have to deliver. Yes. You, yeah, know, yeah, you yeah. have to get results. Yeah. All right, well then, thank you very much for taking thank the time. Thank you for having me. It was such a good conversation. I really haven't spoken about Singapore so much. Yeah, I'm glad you did. It was very interesting. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right, wait, do you release it? Release? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>